In this presentation, we will take a look at how to put together an amortization schedule related to notes payable. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here's going to be our information. We have our initial journal entry based on this information. We have a loan that we took out, $100,000. we have got the interest at 9%. Number of monthly payments, 36. To put this on the books, the initial loan, all we need is really the 100000 to record the initial loan, meaning we got cash of 100000 The note payable went up by 100000 So here's the cash going up. Here's our note payable. The note payable is now on the books. Now the tricky part is when we make the payments, because we're going to make 36 of them, even payments, some of that will be decreasing the note payable, and some of those payments will be recorded as interest expense. And it'll differ as time passes. And therefore, we're going to have to break those two out. Now, just before we get into that, note that a lot of times the loan will have these terms and the payment amount, but not an amortization schedule. And even if we do have an amortization schedule, it may be easier for us to, to set up the system to have two individuals or break out an adjusting process to this and a process for data input, meaning if we have a bookkeeper doing the data input that wants to make things as easy as possible and we have an adjusting department, possibly an outside CPA firm working to adjust things, then we might just say, hey, if the easiest thing to do is just make the payments and when you make the payments as the bookkeeper, credit the cash and then always just record it to the note payable, even though part of it is interest. And then at the end of this, we'll just adjust this according to the amortization schedule. What that does is it allows for uh, the, the same recording every time we make a payment to just be standardized. So all we have to do is write a check. We don't have to break it out every time between interest and principal. And then the adjusting entry can be made by the outside CPA firm at the end of the time period by just looking at the amortization schedule and fixing it from a periodic basis. So from a practical standpoint, that's one way to go. The other way we do this is obviously if we get this loan amount and they don't give us an amortization schedule, then we need to make an amortization schedule and we need to properly allocate the interest in principle so that we can record what we have properly. So that's what we'll do now. Now just to note here, uh, if we're not given any one of these informations, we can find the other by, by putting this into Excel very quickly. So just note that uh, if they didn't give you the interest, for example, but they gave you the payment amount, then you can calculate the interest. So if any one of these aren't given, it's it's possible for a contract to be written and uh, not express, uh, expressively give one of these items because it's implied by, by the other. Meaning if we're gonna make so many monthly payments, 36 monthly payments for the original amount of 100,000, we can then figure out the interest, right? Uh, and if, if it's a 100,000 loan and they gave us the interest and we had uh, 36 payments, then we can figure out the payment amount. And that's common in a book problem as well. So it's, it's useful just to know the formula in Excel. We won't do the math here, but if you were in Excel, that you can have equals the payment, PMT is the function, and then the interest rate, and it'll, it'll guide you through it here. And then we're going to take that divided by 12 because we want the monthly interest rate. So it's 9% divided by 12, and then the present value, comma, that's the next function, so here's the comma for the next function. Uh, the, the number of payments is going to be 36, and then comma, and then the present value is going to be the 100,000. So that's just one way we can get to this payment amount. I want to derive this payment amount ourselves because then it'll help us to tie it out to the amortization schedule. In practice, of course, if you were to take out a loan, uh, whoever's you're negotiating with would probably be negotiating and just giving you this payment. They would just say, hey, can you afford this a payment amount? And what you want to be careful of, of course, is to know what the interest is uh, because you want to know not just what the payment amount is, but how much you're paying, how much more you're paying than the loan amount. So this amount is probably going to be given if you're negotiating a loan. And then we're going to have to figure out, okay, what's the amortization schedule? How much of this payment is related to interest and how much of it is going to be uh, principal. Now, a quick calculation on that, of course, is you can take the, well, if I'm paying 3180 times 36, that's uh, 114,480 minus the original 100, 
that's 14480 that we're paying basically in interest over the life of this loan. The life of the loan is 36 payments divided by 12 months or three years. So what, we're, what we want to do now is break that out, however, to a monthly payment because we're going to be paying a different amount of interest versus principal each month. So each time we make this payment, we got to break it out between interest and principal. To do that, we're going to, we're going to start to build an amortization table. Now to build an amortization table in Excel, it's, it's really easy. If you do it in a paper and pencil, it's easy to do as well. Just make sure you have the right columns. So just bring down a piece of paper, uh, actually put a grid on it, and you want payments, interest, principal. I usually call it principal reduction, and then the principal. Because the payment, remember, was given to us. So this is the payment that we that were given in the problem here, or we calculated it in the in the prior slide. In in a real loan, you probably would have the payment. You wouldn't have the amortization schedule possibly. And so then we just need to break out that payment between interest and principal. Now it's it's useful to start off with time zero here and put the original principal, the original loan amount, up top. And then the payment we figured out last time that's going to be given in our data. Then we're going to have to figure out how much of that is interest. So the interest is going to be always the principal amount, 100,000, times the rate, 0.09, 9%, and that would be for a year. So the tricky part is we've got to take that and divide it by 12. That'll give us for a month. Or in other words, we can take the 0.09, that would be for a yearly rate, divided by 12. That would be our, our rate for a month. And that's why we don't represent interest in terms of monthly interest, because it'd be very small numbers. But that would be our monthly interest times the 100,000. And that'll give us the 750. Then we're just going to take the difference then, if we're paying 3180 minus the 750, then, the, then we're going to be reducing the principal. The amount that it will be principal is uh, 2,430. And then the new principal will be the 100,000 minus 2430 or 97,570. Uh, so now we're at our new principal. And then we could just do this again. So the next month payment, it's going to be the same amount. But in order to standardize that amount, we have to vary the amount allocated to interest and principal. So that means the interest now, 732, calculated as 97,570. Our new, uh, our new principal amount here, times the interest rate, 9%, 0.09. So the, so the, whoop, what did I do? And then divide that by 12. And there we go, the 732 rounded. So again, the other way you can do that is take the rate, 0.09, divided by 12, times the 97,570. And that gives you the 732. And then if we just subtract those out, we're going to say the amount that's going to reduce the principal is going to be the 3180 minus the 732, 2448. So the new principal amount now will be 97570 minus 2448, or 95122. Uh, so then if we do this again, we're going to say period the uh, next period, next month, we're going to make the same amount, 3180. The interest that we're going to pay then is going to be the 95122 times times 0.09 divided by 12. So 713, or we take the 0.09 divided by 12 times 95122, and we get that same amount. If we if we then allocate the principal reduction, then is going to be the 3180 minus 713 or 2467. So there's our 2467. And the new principal amount is going to be the 95122 minus 2467. So that's the 92655. So you can see that what's happening here is the amount of interest is going down each time and the amount of principal that's the principal reduction amount is going up. In other words, the payments are staying the same, but the interest portion is going down each time, which means the payment being the same is going to allocate more to the reduction of the principal amount. So the principal is going down, the amount of the balance of the loan is going down at a greater rate which each, with each payment we make. Why? 
because we only owe interest on what is due. So if we paid part of this interest off, we only we only owe 97,570 now. So if we make the same payment, the amount of interest is only being calculated. We're only paying rent on this much money, not on this much money. So the rent, the interest is lower. And the next time we're, we're only paying rent on the purchasing power that we're borrowing on this much money rather than this much money. It's lower. So the interest portion is lower. So we make the, the payments the same because that makes it easy for us to think about our payments and standardize our system. But in order to do that, the allocation between interest and principal will differ as the loan goes. Now, if we do this all the way through, and we can do this easily with Excel, uh, we can just uh, copy and paste the whole thing down or use the autofill function. And then at the end of 36 payments, three years, what will happen, of course, is the balance will go down to zero. And you can see as we go that the interest is going down significantly. The, the interest portion that we're paying is going down and the uh, principal is going up significantly. Now you can think of that as good or bad, right? Because the interest that we pay as a business is actually deductible for us, so that's good. But on the other hand, it's all interest. It's like paying rent. We're not getting, we're not paying down, we're not paying down the liability with the interest portion. And as the principal goes up, that means that we're paying off more of uh, the principal balance. We're getting the loan off the books. So, so as we go, and it's the same with a mortgage, when you, when we have the mortgage payment, the first couple of payments we make is pretty much all interest. It's painful because we're not paying down the loan a lot. We're just paying kind of the rent of the loan off. And at the end, but the good thing is, of course, we, we may get to deduct it. We may get to write it off possibly for taxes. But, uh, at the end of it, we're paying off everything we pay off is bringing down the loan, which is kind of nice because we see the loan balance go down. So there's, there's the um, trade-off as we go through the amortization tables. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.